This program is a ministry of the Through the Bible Radio Network. Let's begin our questions with this one from a listener in Tennessee who asks, Could you please explain the meaning of 1 Corinthians 7, verses 34 through 39? I will turn to 1 Corinthians now, the 7th chapter, and verse 34 to 39. And I'm reading, There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The ought not have any problem with that one. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And that's right that she do that. But if a person is single, they'd be able to give more time to the service of the Lord. I think that any married woman or a married man, for that matter, makes a big mistake in neglecting his family for church work or Christian work today. Now, I've been in Christian work for most of my life, and I want to say to you, there was a time I told my wife when we got married that I put my ministry ahead of everything else and would. And I think that sort of shook her at that time. But the day came when I recognized that I'm not doing God's work if I'm neglecting my family, and that God's work is, first of all, in the family. That's the very bedrock of all of it. And that's what Paul is saying here. And he's not saying that a woman should not marry. What he's saying is that there is a difference, that a woman that's married has a responsibility to her husband, to her family. In the same way with a husband, he would take that same position, of course. But the thing is this, that if you wanted to give yourself totally and entirely to the work of the Lord, then you would not get married. And the Lord Jesus said, some men, they're born eunuchs. That is, they don't need to marry. Some men are made eunuchs of man, and some make themselves. I know a man who went to the mission field. They did that. Now, I'm confident that Paul, in 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, and I can't go the whole chapter, but when I taught it, I took the position that Paul had been married. Now, when he was converted and his wife had died, I think he must have had a wonderful wife, very tender. You notice he doesn't open up his private life, but he speaks so eloquently and beautifully and intimately of a husband-wife relationship. Wives, respond to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. The man that wrote that, wrote it by the Holy Spirit, is true, but he also had a life that had to back that up, I'm sure of that. And so for that reason, I think Paul decided when he became a missionary and was going out, as we mentioned in another question, like across Turkey from tribe after tribe, and they're wild folk, you know. Why, he didn't want to take a wife with him. And he was dedicated to the service of the Lord. Now, will you listen to Paul? I'm going to read the whole passage here. He says, And this I speak, verse 35, This I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Paul says, I'm not trying to put a burden on you. I'm just telling you like it is. Now, if you're a married woman, you've got a responsibility to your family. And I don't care who you are, dear lady, don't you go off and leave your dishes in the sink and your husband not fed in the evening in order to go to some missionary meeting at your church in the afternoon. Your family comes first. Your husband didn't stay home from work in order to attend a meeting. He knew he had to go to work to earn a living to make it possible for you to have a home. Now, let me keep going on here. Verse 36. But if any man think that he behaveth himself unseemly toward his virgin, she passed the flower of age and need so require, let him do that he will. He sinneth not. Let them marry. Paul is saying here that you can't get by with this idea that some have today, and unfortunately some preachers have it, that they can have extracurricular intercourse and get by with it. God says you can't do that. 
And he says, let them marry. If you think that you can get by, find out you can't, then you marry the girl. That's exactly what he's saying. This is about as practical as anything can be. He says, nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power over his own will, and hath so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin, he doeth well. If you want to go that route, you see there's no law about this. It's the decision that you make. And he's still not through. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage, he doeth better. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she's at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord. And I believe that for a Christian woman that if her husband has deserted her, he's made that clear in the first part of this chapter, then I feel that she is free to marry, but only in the Lord. I make no rule. I'm saying that what they should do is to go and talk it over with some good Bible preacher and find out, because I have so many letters. This is my background. I've been married. My husband deserted me and left me with five children, and I'm giving you exactly what was in a letter. And now I've given my life to raise these children, and they're all now up in college and married, some of them. And now I've met a man, and after all these years, should I marry him? Well, on the surface, that looks good, but I don't know the person. And my advice is, go talk to a good Bible preacher and find out what his advice, somebody that knows you. Because I think that, Always circumstances and individuals alter cases.